So this is the simple game project for Scratch. We're going to make a basic um, video game using some um, pretty simple game design elements. And from here you'll be able to jump off and make a more more complicated or advanced game. Um, this project works well in a one or two hour workshop and, and you can have some time to sort of plan out your game before you just jump right in. I'm going to start out by getting rid of this um, this sprite of a cat. And I clicked on the scissors here and get rid of it, just like in a lot of the other projects. And I'm going to paint my own um, sprite. And this sprite is going to be our character sprite. So it's going to be the sprite that the, the video game player is going to control. So I'm going to draw a pirate ship. Um, I'm going to use a little bit fatter brush here. And here we go. Alright, so now I have my player sprite that's going to move around and I'm looking at that and that looks like it might be too big so I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. There we go. So now that I have my player sprite I want to make a background that this um, player is going to move around in. So I'm going to switch to my stage and I'm going to paint three separate backgrounds. One that will be up during gameplay, one that says you win, and then one that says game over that it'll switch to at different points. So I'm going to go ahead and do that by clicking Edit. And again, it'll bring up our editing pan panel. I'm just going to paint um, right in here. All right, so I've painted my three backgrounds. I have my gameplay, you win, and game over. Move the ship out of, ship out of the way there. I'm going to give these backgrounds names so I know. This is for playing. This is you win. And this is game over. So later when I'm programming, um, it'll be a little bit easier to track what I'm using. So next up, we need to make our objective sprite. So our objective sprite um, is going to be what our pirate ship is either chasing or running away from. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to paint a new sprite, and I'm going to paint um, a treasure chest. All right, so now I've created my objective, my treasure chest, that this ship is going to try and catch. Um, so for the player to be able to control the ship, I'm going to have to program the key controls in. So I'm going to go back to my ship, click on the scripts here, and I'm going to look in the control, and I'm going to pull out this when the key is pressed. And so when the right arrow is pressed, I want my ship to point first point right, and then move 10 steps. So now if I hit that arrow, we have it working, and my ship is moving to the right. And I wanted to do that for all four keys. So I'm going to use my stamp tool up here. I'm going to make four copies of this script by clicking on the top script in each set. And we're going to change it to, when I hit the left arrow, I need you to face left. If I hit the up arrow, we need to go up, and if I hit the down arrow, we're going to face down. So now if I hit the arrows, we're moving around. But a ship would sink if it went upside down, so I need to change my sprite rotation. So if we look up here, I just want my sprite to be able to rotate left and right. So I'm going to use that one. So now as I go through the water, I'll stay upright. Um, if you wanted to animate your sprite, now would be the time to do it. So if you had a character that was walking, you could you could work those scripts in. But since I just have a boat here, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, leave it at that, and just start setting up um, my objective sprite. So my goal, my chest of gold, I need it to be moving away from the pirate ship. So we're gonna go over here, and instead of just floating around the screen, which would be one option. I'm just going to have it appear sort of like whack-a-mole in different spots on the screen and um, give the pirate ship time to chase it. So to do that, I'm going to go to my control, bring out the green flag, and then um, we'll pull, pull out a forever too because I'm going to want it to keep doing that. Um, we are going to have it, we'll go to motion, we're going to go to an X or Y coordinate and then wait for a couple seconds, we'll say four seconds, and then it'll do it again and move. And so my stage here is a coordinate grid going all the way from 
negative 240 to positive 240, and then 180 to negative 180 on the y. So I'm going to go into operators and pull out these random blocks. And here. So it's picking a random x and y. Um, and so like I said, my x can go, the lowest value is negative 240, and my highest value is 240. And for y, it's negative 180 to 180. So now it's going to choose a random spot on the screen anywhere and move there, stay there for a couple seconds, and then move again. Now we need the sprites to interact. So when the pirate ship touches the gold, something needs to happen. Um, so I'm going to go back to my pirate ship here, and I'm going to add another script. Um, before I do that, I'm going to need to make a variable. I need to make a variable that's going to be sort of the holder for my score. So I'm going to make a variable for my score. I'm going to call it gold, um, and we'll click OK here. So we have our value up here for our score. So we'll pull this out. So when the green flag is clicked, and I need a forever here, so because this is always going to happen, forever if, and then if I look at sensing here, forever if my ship is touching Sprite 2, and before I move on, I'm even going to go, I'm going to switch to Sprite 2, I'm going to call Sprite 2 gold so I can remember, and we're going to call Sprite 1 ship. So forever if I'm touching the gold, I want to, I'll look under variables, I want to change gold by one, so it's going to up it, and then we're going to say, let's see, yar, there we go, we'll say yar for two seconds. And one more thing I'm noticing here is, I want to make sure that my score starts over every time the game starts over, so at the beginning, before this forever, I'm going to put a set gold to zero so that it resets. So now, hopefully, if I click the green flag, I'm just going to cheat here and move it over. When that's touching, my gold went up to one. It said yar. I can barely catch it. Um, so we'll stop. Now if that ship and the gold stay in contact, my score is going to keep going up. So I want to make sure that um, that this gold moves right away when it gets touched by the ship. So I'm going to make another script here, and, and this is in my gold, and say forever if my, if it's touching the ship, then I want it to move right away. So I'm going to just pull this out and get rid of this weight and put it there. So now whenever it's touching the ship, it's going to move right away to a different spot on the screen to get out of the way of the ship. So let's try that out. So now we have a simple game that we're working on. All right. All right, so we have some scoring happening. So now we need a way for the game to end. So there's two different things we're going to do here. Um, and for these controls, I'm going to go back to the stage because the game is going to start and end based on when that stage changes. So I'm going to add scripts on the stage. I'm going to say that when this is clicked, forever, if, um, and then we have our operators here. So I want to say forever if our gold so I'm going to put our gold variable to number so it can fit in there. If our gold is higher than 9, then we are going to switch to a different background. We want to switch to the background that says you win, because they won if they caught that gold 9 times. And then we're going to look under control. We can say stop all, and that's going to stop our whole program from running. Um, so how are we going to lose? We're going to add a timer element so that there's a t both there's the score counting up and the timer counting down. So we're going to make a new variable for that. And we're going to make a variable, call that time, maybe timer. And we're going to say that when the green flag is clicked, we want the timer, we're going to give the player 
30 seconds. So when, when the green flag is clicked, set the timer to 30. And then forever, we want it to wait a second and then change our timer. So we're going to change the timer by negative 1. So now this is going to make it count down as our game goes on. And then also, if, and then we want to pull out another one of those operators here, if the timer is less than 1, so if the timer is less than 1, we also want to end the game. So we want to switch to that game over background. And then also we're going to stop the game, just like we did with that first one. And one thing I'm noticing, we have it changing at the end of the game to both switch the background to game over or switch the background to you win. We're also going to need a script that says when the green flag is clicked, we need to switch to that gameplay background so it resets itself. And one thing I haven't been doing is testing this as I go along. I'm going to test it right now. We'll click the green flag. We have our timer going here. We're chasing the gold. And we can test it out. And you can have a friend test your game as you go. And once you're satisfied, you can share it on the Scratch website. From here, you can make changes. You could add more sound effects. You could add sound effects. You could add more players, more obstacles. Um, and this is just a jumping off point, so have some fun.